This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and happy times when we actually have a product in for review that I, I like. You know, I could see myself buying one of these. What is it? This is the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G16, the 2024 AMD edition. It's going to get confusing this year. Boy, there's a lot of CPU releases. So earlier this year, ASUS released one with Intel inside, right? Core Ultra CPU, the 28 watt variant. So now we have AMD's new platform, Zen 5. It's the AMD Ryzen 9 AI, whatever, it's HX370. New naming scheme, it's gonna confuse everybody. Gosh, why did they do things like this? But companies like to do things like that. Despite the HX in the name, keep in mind, this is not a 45 watt kind of processor. This is a 28 watt processor, like the HS series we've seen from AMD before in gaming laptops. And it is performant. There are improvements here. We're gonna look at it now. Before we get into all that performance stuff though, uh, first off, the build on this, the, the layout and all that sort of thing is like the Intel one. So it's not reinventing that wheel, but that's fine with me and I think with most people because ASUS has really been getting good at that premium and look and feel and the build quality actually is good. You got an aluminum chassis here, not plastic. It looks clean and nice. You know, we're getting into MacBook Pro and razor blade territory when it comes to the look of the thing. Uh, you know, other than some stickers on the prom rest, which you can remove, but good job there. It feels solid in the hand. It looks like something you could be proud of. And the price is at 2100 to 2300 for gaming laptops that are slim, light, and performant. The Zephyrus is the thin and light line. Uh, that's not so bad in 2024, honestly. So that's good. You get a 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, OLED display, 240 hertz refresh rate. So OLED 2.5K, yay, nice. Uh, it's glossy because OLED is glossy, right? It's not a touch screen though. So if you really hate glossy, um, then do keep that in mind, but that's what happens when you get OLED versus mini LED. Mm. You have a backlit keyboard, duh, no kidding, it is single zone RGB. So you can make it a lovely shade of teal or pink or whatever you want, but the whole keyboard will be one shade. I, that's fine. As we've seen before with the recent Zephyrus line, you get the slash lighting on the lid. I don't know. It's that little diagonal lights up in white can do patterns thing on the lid. You can turn it off too. I, I, I honestly do. What does it do? Give people seizures who are sitting across from you and they get to see it. You don't get to see it, do you? Because it's on the lid. Anyway, it's there. As before, we've seen you get the gray or the white color options. Obviously, we have the gray one. We did the white one for the G14 model. So you can take a look at that one if you want to see what it looks like. I think they both look pretty nice. And uh, the keys are visible, certainly, when looking at the keyboard with either model, honestly. All right, so let's talk a little bit about performance on this. So first off, here's the difference between this one and the Intel version and why the prices stay down at 21 and 2300 instead of going even higher. This one is available with an RTX 4060 or 4070. Again, slim and light designs, uh, what we formerly called max Q. It's 100 watts for the 4060, 105 watts for the 4070. We have the 4070 model here. There's, if you want a 4080, if you want a 4090, you're either looking at Intel or a completely different laptop. So just keep that in mind. Again, this is a 28 watt nominal power CPU from AMD with 12 cores and 24 threads. It performs 10 to 20% better than the Intel counterpart. Now Intel is about to launch a new line, the Core Ultra 2 line. So we'll see if they leapfrog back there in terms of performance, but that's a nice jump. But keep in mind that with games, most of them are GPU bound more than CPU bound. So it doesn't mean you'll necessarily see much of a difference in frame rates in the games that you play. If it's uh, obviously something like an RTS game that's more CPU dependent, you would. But again, for a machine that goes for the look of a posh creator laptop too. For those who are also using this for something more than gaming, probably you are if you're looking at a thin and light, uh, for creative tests, it can make a difference. So that's good to have. Also the AMD Radeon 890M, the new integrated GPU, is more performant too. Nice job. I'm looking forward to seeing that actually in handheld devices too, where that's the only GPU they have. So it makes a big difference. Here, obviously you have dedicated graphics, so you know, it matters less. For AI stuff, you have 50 tops with this CPU. I don't know that anybody's getting too excited about that or the Copilot key. Obviously, the GPU adds some more AI processing power, but it is there for those of you who are enthused by those things. 
Now, I did see some reviews that said that the cooling was not so great if you had it flat on the desk. And if you elevate it with a laptop stand or my favorite trick, just stick like a little earbud box in the back to lift it up. I didn't have that problem. Maybe BIOS and firmware updates have changed the tuning on the fans, but it didn't really make anything more than the usual difference that you see, three to five degrees Celsius, you know, in your CPU and GPU temperatures. Typically when playing games with this set in performance mode, which is where I like to put ASUS's and Armory Crate, if you go to the, the turbo mode, it just gets really loud without much benefit. Uh, I saw the CPU playing in games at native resolution, so that's pretty high, 2.5K, and usually higher ultra and ray tracing turn on kind of settings. And, it was around 51 to 55 Celsius. That's really good for a CPU, honestly. And the GPU is pegged pretty much at 75 degrees, which is really where usually that's the thermal cap on those. So uh, the Intel one gets a vapor chamber. This one does not. Conventional cooling, that's probably something to do with the fact that you're not going to be getting those higher end GPUs here, and that's why, my guess. Anyway, it was fine. Yes, it's a gaming laptop. If you put your hand underneath where the grill is and towards the rear in the center, it's going to feel hot to the touch. But on the keyboard, no. To the left and right of center, fine. In terms of noise, it's a gaming laptop. It's not going to be silent, but it's not incredibly loud. The fans are well tuned with this. It's not annoying. It's not going to make people tell you, go, leave the room. I can't stand the sound of your laptop if you're playing a game. You do have quad stereo speakers, two woofers, two tweeters, and they can overcome the noise of the fan, no problem. They're not bad. I mean, you know, in this price class of gaming laptop, they're pretty good. Asus does a good job with audio. You get a Windows Hello IR camera, 1080p resolution. It's decent enough. And you get Wi-Fi 7. It's a MediaTek card, but I know some of you just hate MediaTek, but don't hate on this card. It's a good card. We have no problems with throughput on this or with range on it. Good stuff. Bluetooth 5.4 as well. When it comes to the internals, well, we're going to take a look at what you can and cannot do with it now. All right, to get inside, we have Torx T5 screws. Most of them are visible. All here, but notice, see, there are these little rubber feet here and here. They're really easy to pop out. So if you have a fingernail, hope you do, and you can get to these two. Now, there are three lengths of screws here. Isn't that fun? The shortest ones are along the front edge here. That's where the battery is of this edge. And the outer ones are the longest, and these are a little bit in between length. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, lots of ventilation down here is something that we do like to see. Nice metal cover. And here are the internals. Stereo woofers facing. Now we have we have quad speakers here, so you've got tweeters and woofers on board. 90 watt hour battery. Under here is the socketed Wi-Fi card, so you could upgrade that if you wish to. Yay that. And we have two M.2 2280 SSD slots. So here is our one terabyte, which is what you get standard with these machines. And here is the second slot. So yay, and the tie-down screw for that. That's nice to see, especially given how slim and light it is. Two fans, obviously, and like I said, conventional heat pipes, no vapor chamber going on here. And the third fan, which some people find annoying, but really this one was not making any high-pitched sounds or doing anything that bothered me at all. Now, RAM is soldered on on this platform. This is becoming a thing, sorry, with the latest CPUs. For increased speed, yes, but you can't upgrade. But happily, most configurations of this come with 32 gigs of low-power DDR5 RAM, dual-channel configuration, of course. So at least you've got a good amount of RAM to last you for years to come on it. And that's the internals. Now for connectivity, you've got USB-C 4 and a USB-C 3.2 port. Both of them support display port. Two USB-A's, one on each side. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you will be happy there for a full-size SD card slot. You don't see that much anymore, and I'm thankful for that because obviously there's cross-chatter with those who are using this for creative work as well. And you've also got an HDMI 2.1 port on board. And of course, a headphone jack. So uh, despite the fact that this thing is slim and lights like four pounds or 1.85 kilograms and about 15 and a half millimeters thick, they found a way to get the ports in there. So that part's good.
Now, battery life, yes, it's a gaming laptop. Yes, it has an OLED high resolution display. Neither of these things is going to be good for battery life. But given the fact that this performs more efficiently than the Intel, doesn't get as hot in terms of the CPU, usually that means better, longer run times. You got a 90 watt hour battery. That's a good capacity battery in this thing. And it has Asus's usual rectangular kind of charger. And it's a 200 watt or so, not that high. Anyway, it wasn't that different from the Intel model, honestly. So you're looking at six to seven hours of moderate light to light use with this thing. Not gaming, obviously. And you want a game plugged in for best performance, but not particularly better than Intel there. So that's the Asus ROG Zephyrus G16 model GA605. That's the one with the Zen 5 inside. So if you're looking for a 4060 or a 4070 and you don't want to break the bank while getting a really posh machine with a lot of ports and a lovely high resolution OLED display, um, you know, you could do a lot worse. In fact, this is really quite nice. If I was in the market for this, I would buy one. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering and thinking, oh, well, the blade is so much better, but it, or, oh, why does the blade cost so much more? The Razer Blade 16 is considerably more expensive than this. Keep in mind, though, that that is an high water, 45 watt, higher wattage new machine. So there's a reason perhaps why it costs more too, to be fair, if you're thinking about this versus the blade. You get more frames and games with the blade, you're going to save a lot of money with this one, and there's the canoodle always. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.